Hello viewers, welcome back to my channel. This is Jahan from Cloud Tech Insights. Uh, today's topic is one of the contributions and uh, the blog I've written uh, on AWS site. Uh, this is regarding Spark on AWS Lambda. Not a very popular topic or not a very catchy topic, but something that interests uh, some of the enterprises and uh, startup customers. Um, just want to highlight uh, by saying that this is nowhere associated with AWS or doesn't share any thoughts or ideas on AWS side. It's a personal opinion and I just want to give my personal opinion on a, a public blog posted by AWS. At the same time, based on some of the requests from the, uh, the users of the blog, uh, I'm just posting some videos to introduce the Spark on Lambda and then also followed by I'm you know, bringing other videos around local testing, how to implement it. So uh, please expect a series of uh, videos around this topic. So let's quickly introduce what Spark on Lambda means. At a high level, uh, the uh, Spark on Lambda is, uh, is an installation of Spark, a containerized version of Spark, and you import that into a Lambda, it becomes Spark on Lambda. And just like any Lambda, you can uh, uh, use a trigger-based mechanism for uh, Kafka from Kafka, Kinesis, S3 files, uh, and then process the file and store it in an S3 bucket or in an Apache hoodie, Delta, an iceberg format. Um, the script can be on a PySpark uh, folder within an S3 location. And all the events within the uh, data processing or Spark on Lambda is captured on uh, CloudWatch logs. So like I said, it's a containerized Spark. Uh, so you can execute it on Lambda, or if you think you want to execute it on ECS, or you want EKS, you want AWS Batch, it's up to you. But this is optimized and made it more serverless for uh, some of our customers for ease of use. Uh, don't have to worry about the warm or cold instances. Don't have to manage any of those. Spark on Lambda is quick uh, in that aspect. Uh, quicker uh, by reducing the JVM cost. At the same time, Lambda also plays a significant role in uh, adjusting the JVM cost. So to begin with, why we need this? Where the idea really stemmed from? Uh, so a lot of uh, customers, they may not have big data in the beginning, but they want to build a scalable architecture for their future needs. Uh, so they want to, they don't want to start something with an expensive, a cluster based framework. They probably want to start with something very simple, either can use pandas and start, but then if the data increases in volume, the pandas code all have to be refactored into Spark. So this is where uh, we uh, thought, hey, what if we can run Spark on a single node or a local mode, which Spark has a native local mode execution. So that's where the idea of Spark on Lambda started. And like I said, there are folks say, I don't have big data now, but I need a scalable framework to build my code base on. And they don't have to refactor four or five years down the lane. So that's one of the reasons why we thought this would be really helpful for certain customers. And also we have to understand that is there is a JVM cost associated with spinning up the clusters. It takes a while. So some of the job executions takes a couple of, I think up to a, up to a minute and a half to execute the job. But when it comes to Spark on Lambda, you can have the bigger file executed in less than 30 seconds. So don't quote me on the benchmarking, but something that you can try on your own and understand what's the difference between the JVM cost. So if, if there is a streaming pipeline that may not require all the time streaming or doesn't have a lot of data coming in, you can always switch to Spark on Lambda option to stream from Kafka or Kinesis and then process the file and place it in Apache Hoodie, Iceberg or Delta table format. These were initially Spark compatible, only Spark compatible. Uh, but slowly started getting into some of the area around Python frameworks, but not mature yet. So that's another reason to have uh, Spark on Lambda. So JVM costs are significantly reduced with the cold start and warm start features uh, within uh, Lambda. At the same time, uh, having a single node and a local mode also helps uh, with the speed. So the other piece is the cost effectiveness to the approach. We can process a file, a single file, which is 400 MB. That's the biggest and I personally have tried 1GB without a problem but I just want to be very careful 
and uh, by saying up to 400 MB, that's a good limit. And uh, typically a block size within Spark should be within 200, 128 or 256 under that but if it's anything more than uh, 200 or 256 it may not be optimal for the bigger spark engine or in general spark world so here we, we can even process up to 400 mb per file so if you can if you have a list of files let's say 10 files of 400 mb you can process through spark on lambda you can pass each file and process it and write it to uh, the corresponding table format etc so the next part is uh, faster processing than cluster based approach when you reduce the jvm cost you you see a speed uh, in processing the file so especially if you're looking for an event based system or a streaming based system this is a pretty fast option to you to use uh, the results on s3 location or any targets of your choice so i've seen customers using spark on lambda to land the data on s3 location etc the other part is it's completely serverless in nature and you can you don't have to maintain the server you don't have to worry about the cold start warm start it's all you can set it up in, in lambda it takes care of the patching and everything etc uh one thing to keep in mind is uh, a lot of these frameworks like apache hoodie iceberg they were initially compatible with only spark and still the mature libraries are around spark uh, slowly they are like uh, diverting into um, other python frameworks but those are not scalable in nature in the future so let's say if you have uh, a small data uh, now and you want to scale up your organization grows and scale up to a big data world uh, then you might need something like spark to scale accordingly and like i said uh, it is a containerized option so let's say if i'm the limits 15 minutes but like i said in 30 seconds i can get most of my job done but let's say if you want a longer running job so you can always use a containerized approach take this container secure it locally upload it on batch or ecs or eks can run the job in a continuous manner for more than i would say hours without a problem so that also enables you to run longer running constant polling kind of job but that's something we have a branch around it i will introduce that branch later but uh, overall like i said you can include spark on lambda and you can either script is on s3 this is considered like an EMR or like a glue. You can throw the script on it. It executes the script and then writes it to the S3 bucket. Similarly, if you think you want a bigger machine, throw it on an EMR, it works that way too. So you can use the same script on all three machines without a problem, as long as it's in the vanilla Spark coding standards. And I want to introduce you to the, uh, the blog and this is the blog I'm referring to. I will leave a link in the description for people who are unfamiliar with the concept and also want to highlight the the github branch uh, this is also uh, for folks who are not aware about the branch uh, we have uh, constant contributions happening uh, this is the main branch and we have some other branches in uh, in the development phase and i would want to highlight release 0.3 is the latest version uh, we have added connectors to snowflake redshift etc and also consider glue integration glue catalog integration so so that you can update the catalog or use the glue tables from glue catalog as well and this is the blog and we have a lot of information on the read me dark md and uh, please use this information uh, there's a lot of good information here some highlights on how to create it using the code build mentioned in the blog at the same time you can create it manually uh, in your local system uh, we have a very detailed wiki page so uh, click on click on the wiki page we have a lot of information here if you look at this menu right here we have more information here uh, we have the benefits uh, the cloud formation the local testing i think this is one of the critical part um, so you can test these uh, spark on lambda locally on a cloud nine or id of choice and you get just four simple steps fill in those information and you can test it locally so i would highly recommend people to test it locally before deploying it on a lambda on an aws instance so thing to think about i will talk about this local testing in my next video thank you so that concludes our uh, session um, i will be creating more videos around how to local test how to deploy spark on lambda i'll open some uh, queries that i got from the users as well um, so please stay tuned uh, subscribe to the channel so that you get the latest information when i post the new videos regarding spark on lambda just for information there are other videos in in the uh, channel around bedrock if you're interested in 
Gen AI uh, or trying to be uh, specialized in uh, AWS Gen AI, that's the perfect video series for you, you guys. Thank you again. Thanks for watching the video.